the 12th of September 1980 Turkish coup d'état Turkish 12 Eylül darbesi headed by chief of the general staff general Kenan Evren was the third coup d'état in the history of the republic the previous having been the 1960 coup and the 1971 coup by memorandum during the Cold War era, 1970s Turkey experienced conflicts between Western-supported nationalist far-right elements within the military and militant left-wing groups. To create a pretext for a decisive intervention, the Turkish military allowed these conflicts to escalate, some say they actively adopted a strategy of tension. The violence abruptly stopped afterwards, and the coup was welcomed by some for restoring order. In total, 50 people were executed, 500,000 were arrested and hundreds died in prison. For the next three years the Turkish armed forces ruled the country through the National Security Council, before democracy was restored. <inaudible> Prelude In 1975 Süleyman Demirel, president of the Conservative Justice Party Turkish, Adalet Partisi, AP succeeded Bülent Esevit, president of the Social Democratic Republican People's Party Turkish, Cumhuriyet Halk Partisi, CHP as prime minister. He formed a coalition with the Nationalist Front Turkish, Milliyetçi Sef, Nijmetin Erbakan's Islamist National Salvation Party Turkish, Milli Selamit Partisi, MSP and Alparslan Turks far-right nationalist movement party Turkish, Milliyetçi Hareket Partisi, MHP. The MHP used the opportunity to infiltrate state security services, seriously aggravating the low intensity war that was waging between rival factions. The elections of 1977 had no winner. First, Demirel continued the coalition with the Nationalist Front. But in 1978, Esavit was able to get to power again with the help of some deputies who had shifted from one party to another. In 1979, Demirel once again became prime minister. At the end of the 1970s Turkey was in an unstable situation with unsolved economic and social problems facing strike actions and partial paralysis of politics the Grand National Assembly of Turkey was unable to elect a president during the six months preceding the coup. Since 1968-69, a proportional representation system made it difficult to find any parliamentary majority. The interests of the industrial bourgeoisie, which held the largest holdings of the country, were opposed by other social classes such as smaller industrialists, traders, rural notables, landlords, whose interests did not always coincide among themselves. Numerous agricultural and industrial reforms requested by parts of the middle upper classes were blocked by others. Henceforth, the politicians seemed unable to combat the growing violence in the country. Unprecedented political violence had erupted in Turkey in the late 1970s. The overall death toll of the 1970s is estimated at 5,000, with nearly 10 assassinations per day. Most were members of left-wing and right-wing political organizations, then engaged in bitter fighting. The ultra-nationalist Grey Wolves, youth organization of the MHP, claimed they were supporting the security forces. According to the anti-fascist Searchlight magazine, in 1978 there were 3,319 fascist attacks, in which 831 were killed and 3,121 wounded. In the central trial against the left-wing organization Devram C. Yal Revolutionary Path at Ankara Military Court the defendants listed 5,388 political killings before the military coup. Among the victims were 1,296 right-wingers and 2,109 left-wingers. The others could not clearly be related, but were most likely politically affiliated. The 1978 Basilevler massacre, the 1977 Taksim Square massacre with 35 victims and the 1978 Maras massacre with over 100 victims are some notable incidents. Martial law was announced following the Karamanmaras massacre in 14 of then 67 provinces in December 1978. At the time of the coup martial law had been extended to 20 provinces. Esavit was warned about the coming coup in June 1979 by Nuri Gundis of the National Intelligence Organization MIT. Esavit then told his interior minister, Irfan Ozadenli, who then told Sedat Selesun, one of the five generals who would lead the coup. The deputy undersecretary of the MIT, Nihat Yildiz, was demoted to the London consulate and replaced by a lieutenant general as a result. Topic. Coup 
On the 11th of September 1979, General Keenan Everin ordered a handwritten report from full General Haydar Saltik on whether a coup was in order or the government merely needed a stern warning. The report, which recommended preparing for a coup, was delivered in six months. Evren kept the report in his office safe. Evren says the only other person besides Saltik who was aware of the details was Nuruddin Ersin. It has been argued that this was a ploy on Evren's part to encompass the political spectrum as Saltik was close to the left, while Ersin took care of the right. Backlash from political organizations after the coup would therefore be prevented. On 21 December, the War Academy generals convened to decide the course of action. The pretext for the coup was to put an end to the social conflicts of the 1970s, as well as the parliamentary instability. They resolved to issue the party leaders Suleiman Demirel and Bulent Esavit a memorandum by way of the president, Fari Koradurk, which was done on 27 December. The leaders received the letter a week later. A second report, submitted in March 1980, recommended undertaking the coup without further delay, otherwise apprehensive lower-ranked officers might be tempted to take the matter into their own hands. Evren made only minor amendments to Saltik's plan, titled Operation Flag. Turkish, Bayrak Harikati, the coup was planned to take place on of July 1980, but was postponed after a motion to put Demirel's government to a vote of confidence was rejected on 2 July. At the Supreme Military Council meeting Turkish, Yüksek Askeri Sura on 26 August, a second date was proposed, 12 September. On 7 September 1980, Evren and the four service commanders decided that they would overthrow the civilian government. On 12 September, the National Security Council Turkish, Milli Güvenlik Konzi, MGK, headed by Evren declared coup d'état on the national channel. The MGK then extended martial law throughout the country, abolished the parliament and the government, suspended the constitution and banned all political parties and trade unions. They invoked the Kemalist tradition of state secularism and in the unity of the nation, which had already justified the precedent coups, and presented themselves as opposed to communism, fascism, separatism and religious sectarianism. Economy One of the coup's most visible effects was on the economy. On the day of the coup, it was on the verge of collapse, with three-digit inflation. There was large-scale unemployment, and a chronic foreign trade deficit. The economic changes between 1980 and 1983 were credited to Turgut Özal, who was the main person responsible for the economic policy by the Demirel-destined administration since 24 January 1980. Ozil supported the IMF, and to this end he forced the resignation of the director of the central bank, Ismail Adenoglu, who opposed it. The strategic aim was to unite Turkey with the global economy, which big business supported, and gave Turkish companies the ability to market products and services globally. One month after the coup, London's International Banking Review wrote. A feeling of hope is evident among international bankers that Turkey's military coup may have opened the way to greater political stability as an essential prerequisite for the revitalization of the Turkish economy. During 1980 1983, the foreign exchange rate was allowed to float freely. Foreign investment was encouraged. The national establishments, initiated by Ataturk's reforms, were promoted to involve joint enterprises with foreign establishments. The 85% pre-coup level government involvement in the economy forced a reduction in the relative importance of the state sector. Just after the coup, Turkey revitalized the Atatürk Dam and the southeastern Anatolia project, which was a land reform project promoted as a solution to the underdeveloped southeastern Anatolia. It was transformed into a multi-sector social and economic development program, a sustainable development program, for the 9 million people of the region. The closed economy, produced for only Turkey's need, was subsidized for a vigorous export drive. The drastic expansion of the economy during this period was relative to the previous level. The GDP remained well below those of most Middle Eastern and European countries. The government froze wages while the economy experienced a significant decrease of the public sector, a deflationist policy, and several successive mini-devaluations. Topic. Tribunals The coup rounded up members of both the left and right for trial with military tribunals. 
Within a very short time, there were 250,000 to 650,000 people detained. Among the detainees, 230,000 were tried, 14,000 were stripped of citizenship, and 50 were executed. In addition, hundreds of thousands of people were tortured, and thousands disappeared. A total of 1,683,000 people were blacklisted. Apart from the militants killed during shootings, at least four prisoners were legally executed immediately after the coup, the first ones since 1972, while in February 1982 there were 108 prisoners condemned to capital punishment. Among the prosecuted were Esavit, Demirel, Turks, and Erbakan, who were incarcerated and temporarily suspended from politics. One notable victim of the hangings was a 17-year-old Ertel Aren, who said he looked forward to it in order to avoid thinking of the torture he had witnessed. After having taken advantage of the Grey Wolves' activism, General Keenan Evren imprisoned hundreds of them. At the time, there were some 1,700 Grey Wolves organizations in Turkey, with about 200,000 registered members and a million sympathizers. In its indictment of the MHP in May 1981, the Turkish military government charged 220 members of the MHP and its affiliates for 694 murders. Evren and his cohorts realized that Turks was a charismatic leader who could challenge their authority using the paramilitary Grey Wolves. Following the coup in Colonel Turks's indictment, the Turkish press revealed the close links maintained by the MHP with security forces as well as organized crime involved in drug trade, which financed in return weapons and the activities of hired fascist commandos all over the country. Topic. Constitution Within three years the generals passed some 800 laws in order to form a militarily disciplined society. The coup members were convinced of the unworkability of the existing constitution. They decided to adopt a new constitution that included mechanisms to prevent what they saw as impeding the functioning of democracy. On 29 June 1981 the military junta appointed 160 people as members of an advisory assembly to draft a new constitution. The new constitution brought clear limits and definitions, such as on the rules of election of the president, which was stated as a factor for the coup d'état. On 7 November 1982 the new constitution was put to a referendum, which was accepted with 92% of the vote. On 9 November 1982 Keenan Evren was appointed president for the next seven years. Result 650,000 people were under arrest. 1,683,000 people were blacklisted. 230,000 people were tried in 210,000 lawsuits. 7,000 people were recommended for the death penalty. 517 people were sentenced to death. 50 of those given the death penalty were executed 26 political prisoners, 23 criminal offenders and one Asala militant. The files of 259 people, which had been recommended for the death penalty, were sent to the National Assembly. 71,000 people were tried by Articles 141, 142 and 163 of Turkish Penal Code. 98,404 people were tried on charges of being members of a leftist, a rightist, a nationalist, a conservative, etc. organization. 388,000 people were denied a passport. 30,000 people were dismissed from their firms because they were suspects. 14,000 people had their citizenship revoked. 30,000 people went abroad as political refugees. 300 people died in a suspicious manner. 171 people died by reason of torture. 937 films were banned because they were found objectionable. 23,677 associations had their activities stopped. 3,854 teachers, 120 lecturers and 47 judges were dismissed. 400 journalists were recommended a total of 4,000 years imprisonment. Journalists were sentenced 3,315 years and 6 months imprisonment. 31 journalists went to jail. 300 journalists were attacked. 3 journalists were shot dead. 300 days in which newspapers were not published. 303 cases were opened for 13 major newspapers. 39 tons of newspapers and magazines were destroyed. 
299 people lost their lives in prison. 144 people died in a suspicious manner in prison. 14 people died in hunger strikes in prison. 16 people were shot while fleeing. 95 people were killed in combat. Natural death report for 73 persons was given. The cause of death of 43 people was announced as suicide. Source, the Grand National Assembly of Turkey Turkish, Turkiye Buyuk Millet Meklisi, TBMM Aftermath After the approval by referendum of the new constitution in June 1982, Kenan Evren organized general elections, held on 6 November 1983. This transition to democracy has been criticized by the Turkish scholar Ergun Özbatan as a textbook case of a junta's dictating the terms of its departure. The referendum and the elections did not take place in a free and competitive setting. Many political leaders of pre-coup era, including Süleyman Demirel, Bülent Ecevit, Alparslan Turks, and Nijmetin Erbakan, had been banned from politics, and all new parties needed to get the approval of the National Security Council in order to participate in the elections. Only three parties, two of which were actually created by the junta, were permitted to contest. The Secretary General of the National Security Council was General Haydar Saltik. Both he and Evren were the strong men of the regime, while the government was headed by a retired admiral, Buland Alusu, and included several retired military officers and a few civil servants. Some alleged in Turkey, after the coup, that General Saltik had been preparing a more radical, rightist coup, which had been one of the reasons prompting the other generals to act, respecting the hierarchy, and then to include him in the MGK in order to neutralize him. Out of the 1983 elections came one party governance under Turgut Özal's Motherland Party, which combined a neoliberal economic program with conservative social values. Yildirim Akbulut became the head of the parliament. He was succeeded in 1991 by Mesut Yilmaz. Meanwhile, Suleyman Demirel founded the centre-right True Path Party in 1983, and returned to active politics after the 1987 Turkish referendum. Yilmaz redoubled Turkey's economic profile, converting towns like Gaziantep from small provincial capitals into mid-sized economic boomtowns, and renewed its orientation toward Europe. But political instability followed as the host of banned politicians re-entered politics, fracturing the vote, and the Motherland Party became increasingly corrupt. Ozil, who succeeded Evren as president of Turkey, died of a heart attack in 1993, and Suleyman Demirel was elected president. The Ozil government empowered the police force with intelligence capabilities to counter the National Intelligence Organization, which at the time was run by the military. The police force even engaged in external intelligence collection. Topic. Trial of coup leaders After the 2010 referendum, an investigation was started regarding the coup, and in June 2011, the specially authorized Ankara Deputy Prosecutor's Office asked ex-prosecutor Sasset Kayasu to forward a copy of an indictment he had prepared for Keenan Evren to court. Kiyasu had previously been fired for trying to indict Evren in 2003. In January 2012, a Turkish court accepted the indictments against General Kenan Evren and General Tosin Sahinkaya, the only coup leaders still alive at the time, for their role in the coup. Prosecutors are seeking life sentences against the two retired generals. According to the indictment, a total of 191 people died in custody during the aftermath of the coup, due to inhumane acts. The trial began on 4 April 2012. In 2012, a court case was launched against Sahinkaya and Keenan Evren relating to the 1980 military coup. Both were sentenced to life imprisonment on 18 June 2014 by a court in Ankara, the capital of Turkey. Sahinkaya died at age 90 in the military Gata Hospital in Istanbul on July 9, 2015. Evren died at a military hospital in Ankara on 9 May 2015, aged 97. His sentence was on appeal at the time of his death. Topic. Allegations of the U.S. involvement The American involvement in this coup was alleged to have been acknowledged by the CIA Ankara station chief Paul Hens. In his book, 12 A. Lowell, Sot 4 O'Clock. 
Journalist Mehmet Ali Burand wrote that after the government was overthrown, Hens cabled Washington, saying, "'Our boys did it' on June 2003 interview to Zaman Hens denied American involvement stating, "'I did not say Carter. Our boys did it. Quote, it is totally a tale, a myth, it is something Burand fabricated. He knows it, too. I talked to him about it." Two days later Burand replied on CNN Turk's Manset by saying, it is impossible for me to have fabricated it. The American support to the coup and the atmosphere in Washington was in the same direction. Hens narrated me these words despite he now denies it, and presented the footage of an interview with Hens recorded in 1997, according to which a diplomat rather than Hens informed the president, saying, Boys in Ankara did it. Some Turkish media sources reported it as, Hens indeed said our boys did it. The U.S. State Department itself announced the coup during the night between 11 and 12 September. The military had phoned the U.S. Embassy in Ankara to alert them of the coup an hour in advance. Both in his press conference held after the government was overthrown and when interrogated by public prosecutor in 2011 General Keenan Everin said the U.S. did not have pre-knowledge of the coup but we informed them of the coup two hours in advance due to our soldiers coinciding with the American community JUSMAT that is in Ankara. Tosin Sahinkaya, then general in charge of the Turkish Air Forces who is said to have traveled to the United States just before the coup, told the U.S. Army general was not informed of the upcoming coup and the general was surprised to have been uninformed of the coup after the government was overthrown. In culture The coup has been criticized in many Turkish movies, TV series and songs since 1980. Topic. Movies 1986 Sen Turkalarini Soil 1986 Daikanli Yal 1986 Princes 1986 Ses 1987 Avenue Zamani 1987 Kara Sevdali Bullet 1988 Sis Zulfu Livaneli 1988 Kimlik Mela Gulgan 1989 Bhutan Kapilar Kapaliyadi Memda Un 1989 Ukramayi Vermasinler Tunk Baserin 1990 Bekel Dedim Golgai Adif Yilmaz 1991 Uzlazma Oguzan Turkin 1994 Babam Askard Handan Ipekchi 1995 to 80 Adam Tomris Jirat Lioglu 1998 Gulen Bitigir Ismail Goons 1999 Alol Fertinasi Adif Yilmaz 2000 Ku Darb a documentary history of the Turkish military interventions documentary Elif Savis Felsen 2005 Babam Ve Oglum Kagan Ermak 2006 Bainalmil Siri Shurya Ander 2006 Eve Danus Omer Yujer 2007 Zinserbozin Atil Anak 2008 O Kokuklari Marat Sarakoglu 2010 September 12 Oslam Sulak 2015 Bizim Hake Topic Television series 2004 Semberimde Gul Oya 2007 Hadarla Sevgali 2009 Bu Kalp Seni Unitor Mu 2012 Sexenler 2010 Oil Beer Gesser Zaman Ki Topic Music Jem Karaka 1992 Manga 2006 Aben 2008 Raptia Rap Rap 1992 Fikret Kazilik Demerbus 1995 Grup Yoram, Buyu, composed in memory of Ertel Aren. Hassan Mutlukan, Yain de Salinior. Mor Ve Otesi, Darb, 2006. Ozan Arif, Yasior Keenan Pasa. Ozan Arif, Sexonsiler. Ozan Arif, Mahasib, 12 Alol. Ozan Arif, Beer It Vardi. Sexon, A.D. the 12th of September. Listen. Sexon, Censored Inc. Album, 2009. Listen. Sezen Aksu, Sun Bacchus 
Suavi 1996. Tioman and Yavuz Bingal, Iki Kochik 2006. Ozdemir Erdogan, Gurbet Turkusu Ezgin and Gunlugu, 1980 Kramp, Lan Noldu See also 1960 Turkish coup d'état 1971 Turkish military memorandum 1997 Turkish military memorandum 2016 Turkish coup d'état attempt Diyarbakir prison History of Turkey List of modern conflicts in the Middle East References Bibliography Ganser, Daniele NATO's Secret Armies. Operation Gladio and Terrorism in Western Europe. London, Frank Cass. ISBN 0-7146-5607-0. Herman, Edward S., Broadhead, Frank The Rise and Fall of the Bulgarian Connection. New York, Sheridan Square Publications. ISBN 978-0-9403800-06-6.